In this video, we're going to look at how we can calculate confidence intervals for the mean, as well as identify whether we should calculate those confidence intervals based on a Z distribution or a T distribution. Let's start there. So here we have a normal distribution. This is going to be our Z distribution, which is what we're going to get as long as we have a sample size of, of 30 or more from a homogeneous group. And that's great because then we end up with these absolute values that help capture a certain proportion of the population. So, for example, if we take the mean value and we plus or minus one standard deviation, we should capture around about 68% of the population. If we do the mean plus or minus two standard deviations and actually 1.96 to be exact, we capture 95% of the population. When we have less than 30 people, we then use a T distribution. And the principal difference really being that these tails are a lot thicker. There's a lot more cases held up at either end of the curve. And, and it also means we can't use absolute values like we can with a normal distribution because those values are going to change based on sample size. That sample size will change the shape of the curve. So let's start with this. Excel sheet over in this cell here. And, and the first thing to identify really is what confidence intervals do you want? Do you want 95%, which are typically used um, uh, by convention, or we could have 90%, or indeed we could even go for 99% if we really wanted to capture the majority of the population. And what you can see is that we then have this probability value down, down here, which is from null hypothesis significance testing, you'll recognize that as an alpha level. That's the 1% the that's outside of what we are capturing. And of course, if I go back to 95%, you can see we're missing 5%. If I go to 90%, you can see we're missing 10%. So starting with the calculation of the Z score, now, because it isn't just an absolute value, it won't change based on sample size. All it needs to know is what that probability value is, which is just the inverse of what the confidence interval is that you want to calculate. So with that in place, it can it can just calculate your score. So again, 90% will relate to 1.64. And as we said, 95% will relate to a Z score of 1.96. So that's 1.96 standard deviations will calculate 95% of the population, or will capture 95% of the population. Now, when we have a, a, a small sample size, so less than 30, we're going to use a T distribution. And that means that we, as well as knowing what probability we want to, to capture, again, which is the inverse of the confidence interval we're looking to uh, uh, include, then it also needs to understand the the sample size and it does that from this degrees of freedom which quite simply is one minus the sample size now whether we should use the t-score the z-score as i've said a couple of times now is really just based on sample size so as a rule of thumb if there's less than 30 we're going to use a t-score if there's 30 or more we can use a z-score so i've just done this f formula here to flash up so we're reminded but we can build it into our equation down here which you'll note in just a moment so let's put some confidence intervals around the mean and of course we're going to need to know the standard deviation as well because to calculate confidence intervals you get your mean and then it's plus or minus the z-score or t-score if you're working with less than 30 multiplied by the standard error and the standard error is calculated as a standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size so if we take this example here and i'm going to whack this up to 31 so now we know that we should be using this z score what we can see and we keep at 95 percent confidence intervals so how is this calculated so i've just got this if bit so it knows whether to take this number here or this number here and because it's more than 30 it's going to take this number here which is b5 and then it's going to multiply it by the standard deviation which over here is b13 divided by the square root of the sample size which is 31 so there's our there's our 
confidence interval and then to create this lower limit and upper limit we just simply get our point estimate which in this case is the mean and all we do is minus the confidence interval from it there and in this one you'll see we get our point estimate and we just add our confidence uh, interval to it to get this value here now if i was to drop this value down let's take this to 18 as an example we now you can use a t-score so when we look at the calculation, it's now going to base it off of this value here. Again, multiplied by the standard deviation divided by the square root of that sample size.